In this video, I'm going to show you how to easily add alternating templates to your blog post feed in Elementor. Now, in order to follow this tutorial, you will need Elementor Pro and this plugin called Elementor Custom Skin Pro. If you're not familiar with the plugin Elementor Custom Skin, I recommend you check out this video first. Um, I'm going to add a card up here, and you can also just go to YouTube and type in Elementor Custom Skin, and it should be this video right here. So in this video, Barbara already went through how to use the tool for the free version. So this video is just going to focus on that feature in the pro version called alternating templates. So you need to already know how to use this tool to follow this tutorial. So I also threw the link in the description below. Now I'm going to show you some examples of these alternating templates. So from their website, they have a few examples. And as you can see, when you scroll down, we have text on the left, image on the right, and then it's flipped. And you have these little things animated in. Uh, same thing here, every other template is a different uh, color background, so that makes it look different. And this one's pretty cool. They have a little border, so it looks like it's kind of flowing down like that. Now let me show you the example that I'm gonna actually walk you through how to create on our website. So on this example, I wanted to have three different skins or templates for how we want to lay out our blog posts. So on the first one, I have an image on the left, the header, this post information, and just, you know, the description and a read more button. The second one I wanted to have is a little bit of a different color background and flip it where the image is on the right and then this content's on the left. And then I wanted to do something fun for this tutorial, so I just wanted to add a unique uh, third option or template so when the user scrolls down, you can see it's like just a standalone featured image and I have it growing as you scroll and a little bit of a box shadow. So it just really mixes up the page and makes it look very unique. So if I just keep scrolling down, you'll see I have three different templates and using this plugin, you can easily add this to your post widget with an Elementor. So let's just jump right into the tutorial now. So in order to pull this off, I had to create three different templates and within the post widget here is where you enable the different templates right here. So let me just go through each one of these templates, how they're created, and then how to easily add that to your post widget. So I just called it skin one, two, and three. So this is skin one, this is skin two, and skin three, just so you can easily follow along. All right, so if you follow the other video, you should already know how to create these loops. It's very simple. It's just, uh, in this example, a two column layout. We just have the post featured widget. Uh, we have the title, the meta descriptions here. And this is a pretty cool thing is you can add a post summary. So you can easily change the length of the post summary right here. So instead of using the excerpt, which uh, if you don't have on this blog post, it won't pull in anything. So in this example, I just have it where it pulls in the first 40 characters of the blog post itself. So what's cool is you can just add this widget um, I'll show you how to do it. You add a regular text widget, click on this dynamic down here, and if you scroll down to post summary, you just click that, and now you can easily just change the length of this uh, text right here. So you can do it by 40, whatever, whatever will work for your design. And what's really cool is you could do um, after, you could put three dots, and so it, the user then knows that you have to click this button to read the full um, blog post. So let me just update that, hit save and close. So when you create these loops, uh, you don't have to, dis, um, under here, you don't, you don't change any of these uh, display conditions or anything. You just need this template basically. So let me jump into the second one. Uh, it's basically the same thing, I just flipped it and what I wanted to do is each one of these, I wanted to have a unique different template. So when we lay it out on the post widget, you can see uh, the big difference between each of these templates. So in this example, I just flipped the two columns and I added a um, background color for the whole section. So you can see right here, I just added a simple gray color because the way I see it is if you're gonna have it alternating templates, you might as well have them pretty extreme so they stand out. And for the third skin, like I said, I wanted to add something very different for this tutorial. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how I did that. So I just pulled in the uh, featured image uh, widget, just tie it there, image size, large, whatever it will fit in your container. And what I did here is I added a motion effect. So if you go down to scroll in effects, I have that on. I went to scale 
and I just scaled it up one. So when you scroll, it just scales up in between the 20 and 80% mark. And then I also wanted to just add a simple uh, box shadow behind this element. So you can do that by clicking advanced border and under box shadow, you can change that right here. So what I like about this tool is you can visually see it in real time, how extreme you want the shadow. So let's say we want to have it a little more extreme like that. And maybe push it over like that. Just hit update and save and close. So now that you have a few different templates ready to go, let's go ahead and uh, add those to your post widget. So now we're on the page where we're going to add the post widget. And I'm going to show you how to enable the alternating templates feature. So let me just go ahead and delete this so I can show you how easy it is to pull this off. So you just pull in a regular Elementor post widget. Let's pull it in here. So as you can see, it just pulls in the classic skin. So what we need to do is enable the Elementor custom skin and then add the alternating templates to it. So let me just show you how that's done. So you go up here and instead of classic, you go to custom. And what you need to do is select your very first skin. So in our case, the skin number one is gonna be the very first one. Then we're gonna have skin two and then three below it. So let's just style this up. Usually it defaults to three columns. So in our design, we just have it as one column. So let's go down here where it says three columns. We just change that to one. So now you can see this is just displaying just like in the other tutorial we have. It is just gonna keep showing the same thing over and over and over. We don't want that. For this one, we want to have skin two and three show up. So to pull that off, you just click right here where it says alternating templates and you just click right here. So what you need to do now is change this. So the second one is skin number two. There you go. So now every second post is going to be skin number two. So to add a third one, you just do the same thing. So instead of the first or the second post, you're gonna want the third post, skin three. And there you go. I told you it was very easy. Once you create the skins, you can see how quick that was. Just go ahead and now you can just test it to make sure that that scales correctly. We've got the big box shadow here. So what I do recommend is keeping your skins organized when it comes to the file names, just so you don't get confused. So this was a good example where I wanted to make sure that the file names for the templates were very organized because uh, you don't want to lose track of where your templates are. It's going to get real messy. So uh, in most cases, just name them where they're going to display inside the blog feed. So I just skin one, the skin two, and a skin three. And that's it. This is all you really have to do. So now you can go ahead down here and change how many posts you want per page. If you want to add something like 24, you can see we'll add up to 24 right here. And what I do recommend though is if you need some extra breathing space in between your blog post, I recommend you do it within these settings here and not on the template files itself. So let's say I wanted to add some more breathing space in between all the different skins. You just go up to style here and rows gap, you can just change that to something a little bit bigger. I like to do it within here because it is more global, so you don't have to change it three different times, you just change it the one time. So let's go ahead and just keep making sure that this works. And let's add some uh, pagination down here. So let's just go down here. Let's change that to um, this one. Give that some breathing room down here. So you can do some spacing right here. So let's just go ahead and hit update and let's see how it looks on the front end. So if I go to the page, it should be 24 post. So we got skin one, skin two, three. And as you can see, that one's growing right there. That's pretty cool. Everything's working the way it should. Let's make sure that the pagination works correctly. So if I hit two, it should carry over. Yeah, that functions the way it should. So I hope this video was helpful. And now you can really take your blog post uh, template feed and pretty much do anything you want with it using uh, the Elementor custom skin. Um, so within here, you can do tons of different uh, functionality when it comes to how you want to lay out your pages. If this video was helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and hit that bell to receive notifications when we release more videos like this. Thanks again. This is Mark from Wiki Design.